Creating the exact image you want has never been easier, thanks to ControlNet. A lot has changed in the day since my previous video, so let's take a look at some of the incredible new features which make this Stable Diffusion Web UE extension one of the very best out there right now. Installation is super easy, as you can just install it from the Extensions tab in the Stable Diffusion Web UE. Here we go to the Extensions tab and then Available. You can click Load From, that will give you this big list, and there it is, SD Web UE Control Net. Click Install, download the models into the Control Net Models directory, then back to Installed, apply and restart UI, and you can get going. If you do need more installation help, just take a look at my previous video, which goes into all the minute details for installation. If you're looking for links and stuff, you'll find those down in the video description, close to those like and subscribe things. In this video, I'll be going through some of the very latest features, and these include a bunch of new settings, something called Guess Mode, the ability to have multiple control nets, and also an interesting way to create animations without actually using any video input. Let's have a look at these settings first, as I'm sure there'll be something there that you want to change. Very easy to get to, you just go to Settings in the tab at the top, and then Control Net on the side. Now, if you saw my previous video, you'll notice this section has grown quite a bit. Some of the interesting new options in here include multiple control nets there. The maximum model amount, I've got mine set to two, so I can run two control nets at a time. I'll be showing this in more detail in a moment. Models can now also be cached, and there, model cache is where you set the cache size. There is also an option to use mid control on high res pass. This can help with the high res fix option in text to image, just like the example image in the GitHub issues you can see on the screen now. Skip image to image processing when using image to image initial image. Well, remember in my previous video where I noticed the color differences between text to image and image to image? Well, now you can turn off that processing of the top image in image to image if you tick this box. Note that this will essentially disable the ability to use the denoising strength as well, and you'll always do the full number of steps. You can enable optimized monocular depth estimation, and who wouldn't want that? I mean, it's optimized. Only use mid control during inference. This can change your output quite dramatically. As you can see here, the images are indeed quite different. When only using mid control, the image is slightly more imaginative and doesn't stick quite as tightly to the given image. And lastly, enable CFG based guidance. This is an experimental feature which can improve image quality. Apparently, it works best with a lower guidance scale, such as between 3 and 5. Personally, I didn't see much difference myself, but hey, if it maybe improves image quality in some cases, then why not? With everything now set up however you want, let's take a look at my favourite new feature Guess Mode. The original introduction on guess mode says that this will completely unleash all the power of the very powerful control net encoder. In this mode you can just remove all prompts and then the control net encoder will recognize the content of the input control map, the depth map, edge map, scribbles, etc. And for this mode they recommend 50 steps and a guidance scale of between 3 and 5. Personally, rather than guess mode, I'd like to call this match mode, as with the mode enabled, your results will very closely match the image you provide. As an example, I have two images here, one with guess mode on and one without. As you can see, without any prompts, the first image is sort of a black and white kitten stencil, whereas with guess mode on, at least we've got some sort of animal there, and all of this without anything in the prompt box. You can, of course, still use prompts, and I'd suggest that you do, because I think you'll be amazed. It's almost a bit like Instruct Picks to Picks now, where you can just focus on a style or aesthetic in your prompts, such as Pencil Sketch, so I'm just putting Pencil Sketch in there, and Generate, and as you can see when it generates, I make no mention of a cat in my prompt, I've just got Pencil Sketch, but there it is, all pencil and sketchy. As mentioned earlier, when we were looking at the settings, you can now run multiple control nets at once. If I scroll down here, we can see we've got control net 0, but I've also got a control net 1 as well. So let's crack that open and enable that as well. Using multiple control nets can help you in a couple of ways. First off, you may wish to have more precise control over your image. Let's take a look here at an example of a car. 
Here I've got the same car in Control Net 0 and Control Net 1. Control Net 0 is using a depth preprocessor and model, and Control Net 1 is using Canny and Canny. For the time being, Control Net 1 is not enabled, so we just get the depth map. Let's have a quick look at the car with just the depth map. There it is, a very nice looking car indeed. However, if we now go down and enable the second one so that we're also using Canny and compare the image again, you can see that we now have much more detail from the original image. The headlights are closer, the pattern on the ground is there, and there's all sorts of extra little details that simply aren't there in the depth map alone. There it is, so you've got the depth map and also these extra details to go with it. As a bonus, you can also use this to sort of blend images. Yes, you don't have to use the same image in each of your control nets. For example, if I drag a picture of a woman over there into that first control net, then as you can see, we've had the two images blended together, allowing you to mix and match as much as your imagination will allow. All right, now let's take a quick look at some animations. For this little animation trick, I'm not actually going to use any videos to input at all, just static images. And this is all done here in the image to image tab, as we also have a batch mode we can use. First of all, set up your control nets. I'm just using one here for the simplicity in this example. As with the kitten, I'm once again using guest mode, and there it is enabled with the canny processor and model. I've got the same image up the top, and I'm using a very basic prompt of portrait of a woman. That generates an image which looks a little bit like this. All right, and as we saw in my last video, so long as you're processing the top image, then you'll get some nice color changes in your result. If I swap the top image, for example, let's put a different picture in there and regenerate, then you'll get that same image again, but with very different colors. This means you could just go straight to batch now, point it to any old image directory as your input. So there it is, batch. Just put any input directory, have it go through a range of images, and your animation will be that image just changing colors. However, for even more fun, what you can do is also change the denoising strength as well. If I drop this down to around half and then regenerate, you'll see that once again we get a very similar image, but it's actually now matching the one at the top. So this way you can change not only the colors, but also a little bit of the shape as well. If you run the resulting frames through something like film, yes, there's a little link up the top there to what film is. It basically does video interpolation, and you'll get a smooth interpolated video like the ones on the screen now. The one on the left is with denoise 1, and the one on the right has the denoise lowered, so you can see the shape altering as well. And there you have it. You now know all about the new settings, along with a funky trick for making some cool animations. But if you'd like to learn even more Nerdy Rodent stuff, then do click on this video.